Welcome back to episode 3 or 6, I'm not even sure how I'm going to edit this yet. Anyway, welcome back to the Minecraft Prehistoric Aquarium. As you can see, I've been doing loads more building off screen, including making preparations for the invertebrate section, which I'm really looking forward to getting a start on. But first, we're going to finish off our vertebrate section by finally adding the tetrapods, which I think I actually put in the lobe box. So since these are going to be more terrestrial creatures, going to make this sort of outdoorsy, basically, I kind of want to make a petting zoo, to be honest. So this is the kind of thing I've come up with. We're going to start with a creature called Amphibermus, which belonged to a group of animals called the Temnospondyli, which I think are basically just very early amphibians. They lived in the Carboniferous period, and you know, as you can see, they were sort of semi-aquatic, though <laughs> they seem to be pretty hell on on uh, climbing these rocks for some reason. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the noise they make. Like, I wonder if I can hear it from the other side. Okay, I can't hear it from here, but what about from the collection? Oh god. Oh god, that's gonna drive me mad. <laughs> we may have to rethink that. Anyway, Amphibamus comes from the Maison Creek in Indiana. Fossils from the Maison Creek are really amazing. This is another lager stat, and we've talked about these before. And Maison Creek fossils are basically preserved in what we call concretions, these kind of cannonballs of minerals, if you can imagine, that form around the body, preserving not just the bones, but often the soft tissue as well, creating these really amazing impressions. Next up, we have Ichthyostega, again, a very early, you know, not quite amphibian, it's sort of a stem tetrapod. It's a bit like uh, Tiktaalik, for instance. You know, these limbs have evolved directly from the fins of our lobe-finned fishes. So if we look at, uh, oh, half of the lobe fins are missing. Did, did they all kill themselves in the waterfall again? So lobe finned fishes have these thick limb-like fins, and it was these types of fins that eventually evolved into the limbs of animals like Tiktaalik, Ichthyostega, and eventually other tetrapods as well, including ourselves. And this little freak of nature, helplessly dragging itself along the earth like a nasty little goblin, is prime evidence of that evolutionary transition. Alright, I'm, I'm going to move you over here because that noise is literally I, I, it's so hard to talk over it. And finally, we have Limnocellus. We're getting a little bit more derived now, starting to transition away from amphibians into more of a reptile-like creature. So since I moved Amphibamus, we've now got this empty tank. I'm wondering, maybe we could put the Tully Monster in here. So Tully Monster, or Tully Monstrum, is also known from the Maison Creek, and it's a very, very unusual creature. There's actually debate as to whether it's a vertebrate or an invertebrate. It seems to share traits with both. And I've got to word this very carefully, but basically, it looks as though it could have just convergently evolved to look like either side. That's why there's this debate. I hope that kind of makes sense. I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm sure Thomas, who works on these, will talk about them properly in the future at some point. But anyway, I think these look absolutely perfect. The strange horizontal stalked eyes and their weird little grabby proboscis. Oh, they're such strange creatures and they've captured them really well here, I think. And finally, before I forget, you may have noticed we have a new building, and I had a bit of a dorky idea, so let me just clear my inventory real quick. So like so like in Animal Crossing, my Minecraft character is Doctor Who, and I was thinking maybe we should have a dedicated space to store all the different portals. So again, this is staff only, and I it made it look like the TARDIS, so this is the time machine from Doctor Who, and I've got the portals in order in the walls, with extra room in case they add any more in the future before I'm finished. No one will care about this but me, but this entire series has been self-indulgent so far, so who cares? Hold on a second. I think... I think I just heard of a mammoth again. Oh my god, has one of them escaped? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Well, okay, that's... that's kind of terrifying, considering it's so small it could literally be anywhere. Hmm. So in my mind, that was like a really good cliffhanger, but we've not actually done that much this episode, so I think we'll move on and start the Ediacaran. So the Ediacaran was a period of Earth history long before the Cambrian explosion, roughly 600 million years ago. So we're talking long before the evolution of jaws, probably before the evolution of eyes. It, you know, the early life at this time was so unusual, it's almost alien. There is little to no consensus as to where a lot of them fit in the tree of life, or how they're related to modern animals, or even the animals that we find in the Cambrian. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they look at this resolution, I guess. To add some realism to this tank, we're just going to pop back to the Precambrian and collect some stuff. So we can just dive down here and grab some, ooh, some microbial mats. This, yeah, this is going to be a really key source of food for many of our creatures. And, oh, 
Actually, I don't. I recognize this, but I don't quite remember what it is. So we'll look that up in a second, and of course, we'll grab Chalania as well. Okay, so this thing is actually an early sponge, but surprisingly, these branches are actually biomineralized, which means that these are hard parts, which are actually really rare at this time. Okay, so we'll start with Charnia. Like we said before, this is an amazingly important discovery. This is really what convinced paleontologists that there might have been complex life before the Cambrian. So we'll start off with Kimberella, which as you can see is a soft-bodied stem mollusk maybe. Um, most of what we know about Kimbrella actually comes from its trace fossils, little trackways that it left behind in the sediment. But again, based on what we know, this looks perfect. We got a few of them now. This is Dickinsonia, and this actually looks a lot like the fossils. They've done a really good job with this. It's really cool, but yeah, people have interpreted this thing as like a kind of worm or a giant amoeba. But what we do know, as it's demonstrating beautifully right now, is it would basically just shuffle around grazing on these bacterial mats. Um, oh, it also has bilateral symmetry, which I know doesn't sound particularly impressive given that every animal today pretty much has bilateral symmetry, but in the Ediacaran it kind of was. We're going to see some creatures in a second that have really weird symmetries. Like Charnia, for instance, no living thing on the planet grows in the same way this thing did. The fronds grew fractally, which is obviously impossible to show at this resolution. I'll show you what it looks like on the, on the screen. It's really cool. And then we also have Eoandromeda, so again at this scale, <laughs> this is the best you could possibly represent it. Um, I'll show you again, I'll show you a picture so it actually makes sense. But they have these eight spiral arms, which makes them look a bit like a galaxy, hence their name, they're named after the Andromeda galaxy. Um, but you know, they have octagonal symmetry, which is again super unusual. This thing is Paravan Corina, it has this very weird little T-shaped ridge, and again it sort of scoots around the seafloor, presumably eating whatever it stumbles into. Actually, something I do remember about this animal, I remember doing this when I did my undergraduate, there was a very famous paper where they created a digital model of one of these to try and simulate how it would have moved under the water. That's pretty cool. Another fun thing is in this mod, you can actually eat all of the animals, which is something we've not really talked about before, but it's quite fun. But when you cook these things, you get like a Precambrian T-bone, which is so funny. I think at some point we should try and make like a cafeteria or something just to show off all those other things. And finally we have Sprigynia, hey, wow, <laughs> look, look at that blob, amazing. Again, heaps of debate about what this animal is, but you know, this looks exactly like it should. They've hinted at the sort of maybe segmented body it could have had. It's been interpreted as a polychaete worm and even a stem trilobite, I think, at one point. But again, all we know is that it crawled around on the surface, <laughs> as is shown here. So yeah, there you go, this weird little fraction of life at a time when there was no life on land, no plants or anything like that, there's no megafauna, no large animals at all. These were the largest creatures alive at this time, just scurrying around being very strange, and hopefully one day we'll know more about these things. Wait, I heard it again. That damn Amphibamus, it's, <laughs> I'm so far away from its enclosure. Did it come from down here? Aha! You! Finally!